The sea covers over two-thirds of the planet's surface. Yet we know more about space and the universe than we do about our own oceans. Between the states of Connecticut and New York is the Long Island Sound. A naturally protected channel into New York City used for over hundreds of years. The Sound's rich maritime history has played a significant role in the growth of our country. Join us as we explore its unsung residence and its forgotten history. Welcome back. I'm Captain Dennis, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Squalls Marine Divers. Today we're taking a ride across the Long Island Sound from Bridgeport, Connecticut to visit our friends on the other side in Port Jefferson, New York. We had a bunch of people ask me what it's like to dive in the harbor in Port Jefferson. Well, this here is a fishing pier or a bunch of pylons. It could have been a dock. It could have been a lot of different things. But where you find dockage like this, you're going to find evidence of people. So let's get in the water and see what we can find. Still pretty warm out. As I get down to the bottom, I feel something hit my knee and it's our first bottle of the day. Something tells me we'll be finding a few more of these. There's a little bit of a current making its way through here and the area near the pylons it's a little bit crunchier than the soft, silty mud that's just away from the pylons. Um, this is probably due to things getting caught up here, um, as you'll see in a few short moments. When I say crunchy, I mean all kinds of debris. There's pulverized shells, there's bottles, there's all kinds of things in here in these underneath this uh, structure. Here's one of the many pylons. You can see that there's all kinds of growth on it. Here we have a lobster trap that may have gotten caught in a current and found its way in here or it may have been placed here for fishing. But it looks like it's been here for quite a while. There's some evidence of blue shell crabs inside. Here we can see one of the blue shells that looks like he's seen better days. Not much left of them, folks. And here we have a Coca-Cola bottle. Not very old, but still kind of fun to find. And then this guy. This is a Rheingold chug -a mug which is from the 60s. Now this... You can see how silty it is here. This is not a bottle, obviously, but it's an old brick. Gives you an idea how silty it is down here. And on the old brick, it says Leahy. So it's fun to find stuff. And then we find this thing. Obviously, old docks are great places to find old bottles. Now, I don't know what this one is, but this one's actually cooler than the other ones. It's probably a liquor bottle. Some high-end fishermen. Four bottles already. I think we're getting warm. And 
So I'm about 10 or 15 feet away from the pylons. And I really start getting into the bottles. I have a mesh bag that I swim along with that I put my bottles inside. But I'm finding them so fast, I don't even have the time to turn the camera off before I come across some more. You can see some of these bottles are right next to each other and some are up a few feet away. Well, some people say that this pier could have been used to tie off a barge. And this tire here might have been one of the fenders. Oh, and what's over here? Oh, that's right, another bottle. Sometimes large tugs and barges would put tires in between them and the dock to act as fenders so they wouldn't damage the dock or the boat. Is this a space alien that crash landed in the mud? No, it's a horseshoe crab. Sleeping or doing something. And then there's this guy, who is not sleeping, who is making a run for it, apparently. I'm going to swim a little bit closer towards the shore, to where the base of the dock or pylon started. You can see there's some wreckage. And as we get shallower, we get a little bit more ambient light, which means we're going to get a little bit more plant life. It's a little bit more diverse than what we were seeing down to 20 feet. Now we'll head back down towards the pylons again. Oh, well look at that. Another one. You're right, a lot of these bottles are not historic. They're probably, you know, relatively new. But the upside is it makes sense just to help clean out the harbor if we can. Thirteen bottles already. I'm going to need a bigger bag next time. I'm only diving on the south end off of the pylons. So I'm sure if another diver came to this location, they would sure be able to find more bottles. Well, five cents a bottle. I'm sure I'm making a killing today. Look at this. It's a New York resident. It's a local whelk just snailing his way through. Okay, it's getting a little ridiculous. I've got room for about one more bottle. Alrighty, lucky number 21. I think I'm all set. I'm going to actually have to end the dive now because my bag is so heavy. It's a kind of a pain in the butt to swim with. So I'm going to make my way back up to the boat, tie my bag off to the hang line that I have off there, and uh, like to thank you for joining us for another exciting, look at that, it's a little ridiculous. But thanks for joining us, and be sure to check us out at squallsmarine.com for our new videos, and uh, check us out on Facebook, Squalls Marine Divers. Here's a picture of the class photo. Don't ask me what I'm going to do with all these bottles. But until next time, I'm Captain Dennis.